Hi everybody, I'm uh, going to do a little diagram video here on how to build a tire system. We've got tire septics out there, of course we've got tire houses out there, but in this day and age when there are all kinds of problems and plastic cisterns are the main thing and some people don't like them and they're not available in every country, that's for sure, uh, we got to know how to make a cistern ourselves. And even though we use plastic cisterns a lot, um, we've got to know how to make a tire cistern because we get to some country and they don't have plastic cisterns and we're going to build a water catchment home. We got to know how to build a tire cistern. And in, in this day and age when water is even set out to be a problem of the future, I believe that we should have in our back pocket a way to make a water catchment cistern out of something that we can do ourselves. So this is the way to do a tire cistern. Now I'm gonna assume that you've gotten uh, Earthship books or academy or intern program or whatever, and that you can find out for yourself how to pound a tire. So uh, here is the ground for your tire cistern to set up. Now a tire cistern is simply like building a little tire room. Here it is. It's a little tire room with tires all around. That's all it is. You're building a tire room. And we usually use something like, uh, there's no need to use the giant tires that you have in the houses, in the homes and airships. We use something like two foot two tires. Uh, you may, uh, maybe we'll start with two foot fours and go to two foot twos and end up with two foots. And the tire sister, and this is a plan, then let's do a little section here uh, of the tire walls on either side. And, you know, start off with the two foot four tires maybe, and then two foot twos, and then two foots up to the top. And it's just, you're making a simple little tire room is all you're making. And it used to be, this is an important fact, it used to be that the tire cisterns were more, more time consuming and more expensive because it's like building a room. Until a couple of years ago, COVID and everything, the tire cisterns almost have doubled. They used to be like under two grand, now they're over three. Uh, that's for a 1700 gallon cistern. Tire cistern's gonna hold, uh, well, do you, whatever you do the math, uh, if it's a, uh, you can make the diameter whatever you want. You know, we'll make them something like 14 feet in diameter and, and um, 10 feet tall, and that ends up being a 6,000-gallon cistern if you do the math. Just do the math and make it whatever you want. Um, we usually make them around 14 or so. And uh, 10 courses high, but you're basically having to make the cistern be lower than your roof. Here's the cistern lid and the manhole, and your roof is gonna drop water into the cistern, and it, yours, we have gravel around the manhole, and we drop water into the cistern. Now I'm gonna get into a little more detail here. Now, you start with your first course of tires for your tire cistern. I strongly advise in a tire cistern to pound all the tires with gravel. Gravel is a new thing in pounding tires. You have to use the lever technique, which means your, your tire is here and you fill it with gravel and you take a pry bar, a digging bar, and a, a fulcrum right here and seesaw that up. So you're lifting, <coughs> excuse me, you're lifting that tire up and punching the gravel in with your sledge and then the tire can't go back down. You can't just pound gravel into a tire without a pry bar. So you start off with gravel for sure your first two or three courses of gravel. Now, I, like I say, I would do that all the way. So you set up your diameter and you pound your courses. Now, say you're gonna go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 10 courses high. They don't have to be battered. They're just centered and pyramided all the way. Now we end up burying these things, but you don't have to be battered against the burial because the curve, the circle, is a force against the force of burial. 
So now let's get up to the same height over here. So, so far, you're doing nothing but pounding tires for a tire cistern. As I said, you are making a room. You're making a tire room. Now, there's one thing you have to have your water take off. Down at the first course, we're going to be plastering here and pouring a little slab. I'll talk about that in a minute. But on the first course, you have to have a water takeoff. Now what that is, it's nothing but a shower drain, a PVC shower drain. And they are, they look something like this. They have a little grate on them. And um, then there's PVC here. And uh, it goes on and bushes down to PVC pipe going somewhere. Here it's going to go straight through the tire wall and go to your WOM, your water organizing module, or however you're going to, whatever you're going to do with your cistern water. That's another talk. That's another lecture in the Airship Academy and in the intern program. We have a lecture on our WOM, our water organizing module, and this just takes it to that. Like I say, that's another lecture. Now, it is a, it's a shower drain, but you end up plastering to it. So you plaster to the shower drain. And the shower drains usually have a little metal thing on them. We take that metal thing off and we make a new eighth inch thick aluminum cover that has the same holes in it that the shower drain had. But what we're doing is this is our plaster. This is our plaster here. We got plaster right against PVC. Now that's not a waterproof seal. But we take our eighth inch piece of aluminum, which looks like this, it's just a disc with holes in it that match the holes in the, in the uh, shower drain. You discard the shower drain and make this match it. It will have, the shower drain will have two little holes for screws to screw it on. You, you copy them before you discard it. So you're making a, an aluminum eighth inch disc that has two holes to screw it in just like the shower drain piece of metal had and then it's got holes to let the water come in uh, over here on the side and um, and what you do is when you put this aluminum disc on over the joint between plaster and PVC you put through the roof caulking through the roof is the best brand not silicone there's other things you can do but through the roof is a good pliable caulking that fills that joint between the PVC and the plaster coat and makes a gasket. Just a foolproof, leak-proof gasket. We've done it many times. That's what happens here. Notice that the shower drain is a little bit off of the floor. This is the first 10-inch course of tires, but what you're going to do is you're going to be plastering this, and that's going to take up a few inches, and you want a little bit of water before you start running into here. That's your basically silt buildup area, and it's okay to have the silt buildup area. Uh, these are in darkness, they're like aquifers in the earth, and we do let silt build up in them and we don't clean it out because it's a part of the process of the water being clean like aquifers in a cave. That's another lecture there. Now, you have a tire room. Now the next thing you're gonna do is you put mesh on the floor, six by six mesh. That's the stuff that you get at the hardware store that looks like this, six by six mesh. You put that on the floor and you even drape it up the sides a little bit. You know, you just roll it in and put it, you, you, you know, you put it in and you put another one in like this. It comes in four by 10 sheets, you know, and you overlap it and you just cover your floor and up your wall a couple of feet with mesh. Then you take stucco netting now, it wants to be stucco netting, not chicken wire. Stucco netting is stronger. That's the stuff that looks like chicken wire, the hex stuff. And you get that in a four-foot row or a three-foot row. And you put that on top of your tires and down and all the way across on top of the mesh and all the way up the other side. And again, you put it on like this. You put your mesh on over everything. You let it overlap. There should be no place that doesn't have stucco netting, stucco netting going over, down, across, up, and back. 
over, down, across, up, and back. So that's, you cover the entire thing with stucco netting, and you're able to screw that into the tires with pro panel screws, no problem. You can even use uh, metal disc washers if you want, and um, screw that netting into the tires with pro panel screws, and make yourself some little, you know, what a lot of times we'll use bottle caps. We'll take the bottle caps, punch holes in them with a drill, and use them as gaskets to screw to get, catch more of the stucco netting as we screw it into the tires. See? Little bottle caps with a hole in them, and then a pro panel screw goes through that, and that's your attachment to the tires. And in here at the top too. So you just totally cover it with stucco netting, and then you simply do about a four, if not five coat plaster job over the whole thing. You must get enough people together to fill the entire cistern with one setting. In other words, you're gonna plaster all the way down and up, all the way around in one setting. That means two or three or four people, somebody mixing. You wanna use a rich batch of, of mortar, you know, something like a one to three, one plaster sand to, one uh, cement to three plaster sands, uh, maybe three and a half. You put a lot of fibers, a lot of cement fibers in there, more than you normally do. And you've got a bomber, two or three scratch coats, and then a float coat. And you have, and you, you're plastering up to, you're plastering up to the aluminum gasket. And that doesn't matter because it's got through the roof, sealing it all here, and the water just goes through there. And that's what's going on here. Now, um, now you have a room with no roof on it. So what we do on that is we take Trex plastic wood and two by sixes, and we pin them with rebar into the top three tires. So you take, you facet it. Here's a Trex plastic wood right here, and then cut it off like that, and there's another one that goes here. Cut it off and make another one meet it. Trex plastic wood, facet it all the way around. Two layers, one, and then you do another layer over top of that with joints away from the joints that you had on the previous course. You're just faceting wood, uh, plastic wood, across the top of the cistern all the way around. So now you've got plastic wood, two by sixes, pinned. You put them on and screw them first to the tire casing. Then you put the next layer on and screw it to that layer, first layer, and then you pin it. And you leave a little piece of rebar sticking up and bend it over so that all that plastic wood is nailed into the tires with rebar. Now your top three or four courses can be dirt instead of gravel, and that allows the rebar to tie in there better. So now you've got a room plastered with a plastic bond beam all the way around it. And now you are going to do, we have what we call a cistern hub. We have a drawing for it. It's like a manhole. It's made out of 18 gauge metal, and it has a little lip here and here and uh, it has a trough down here. And it costs about $1,000 to get this thing made at a welder shop. And it's a, it's a, it's a disc, you know, it's a, it's a cylinder. And here's the little lip all the way around it, and here's the little trough all the way around that. Now, you set that up on a little tower of two by fours. Just make yourself a little two by four tower with braces with a top on it, and you set the disc right where you want it. You make this attachment lip, is what this is, about three or four inches lower than the top of your Trex 2x6 plastic wood here. Then you get four by 10 sheets of, of uh, 18 gauge metal, and um, uh, no, it's 20, I believe it's 22 gauge metal. This is 18 gauge. Uh, it's 22 gauge metal, four by 10 sheets. Of, it, you get it from the Pro Panel Company. It's got it's co got a color baked on. You got to make sure the color's baked on because that way it won't rust. And then you simply make pies out of this. And those pies 
they go. Here's your cistern with your little lip around it, your, your manhole. And you put the pies on here and on here. And you have to cut a little curve. And you get a heavy-duty rivets and you get an electric rivet gun. And you drill through and rivet them to this lip right here all the way over to the Trex plastic wood. You put one on, then you put one across from that. Then you put one on here and one across from that. And then you keep going. Then you have them in the middle and in the middle, across. And then any voids you have, just make pies and fill it in. So you're just basically, this is in tension. This puts this thing in tension. Here it is on top of your Trex plastic wood down to your attachment lip. Now, don't spare, I mean, don't be tight on the rivets. Use a lot of rivets. They're, they're not the eighth inch rivets, they're the next size up. Heavy duty aluminum rivets so they won't rust. And they get riveted here and they get pro panel screwed in to the Trex. Pro panel screwed into the Trex plastic wood, riveted into the lip here, and riveted to each other just like crazy. Rivet the hell out of all this. And then put a pie in here and rivet it. Now, you take your tower out. And this thing will settle. It'll drop down three or four inches. And you've got a sloped metal roof. It doesn't matter if it leaks. It's going to leak into your cistern. But it keeps the water in darkness. And it supports the manhole. The little lip around the bottom of here is because when this is on and you put a lid on your cistern, a homemade lid of any kind, redwood or whatever, there's a temperature differential between the outside and the inside now. This is getting full of water. And because of the temperature differential between here and here, you get condensation on this. And that condensation runs down and drops into this trough. You take a little piece of PEX plastic off of the trough through the tires, leave a little hole for it, and into your utility room to a big jar and you got distilled water. Then, of course, this goes to your water organizing module or however you want to organize your water. That's another lecture. But this is essentially how you build a tire cistern roof and everything. The roof is not going to rust because it's coated pro panel 22 gauge, I believe, metal 4 by 10 sheet. This is this has got to be painted because it is a um, 18 gauge metal manhole with, and like I say, we have drawings for this. We'll post them uh, with, uh, we'll probably post them when we post this or we'll tell you where to get the drawing for it to take to your welder. But this is an important thing. Water is becoming scarce on this planet. And you, if you're able to build a cistern that holds water out of tires, that's fantastic. It'll hold 6,000 gallons of water. It's cement, and, and cement for cisterns has been around forever, but we don't stop there. After the cement cures for at least 10 days, we do what we call dam tight, or thorough seal. I think thorough seal has evolved into being dam tight. It's a paint on masonry product that will, even if you had a crack, that would seal it. But the reason we tell you to plaster all this in one go is because you will you'll be less apt to get cracks. And uh, so you plaster it, and if you ever get a crack or see a crack, you just, you just paint it with dam tight. Dam tight is what it is. It stops, it stops the movement of water. So now you've got five coats of plaster with fibers and dam tight. Water will harbor there. Go out through here until you get to a valve that opens it up to your water organizing situation. Your roof is rust proof. Your manhole is there. It's in tension. We've got them 20 years old and no movement, no nothing. Uh, we've been doing it for quite a while. We've got lots of them. It works. We just did three more because I wanted to teach my crew how to do this. So, you know, they, everybody said, well, plastic cisterns are faster and easier. Well, they are, and we've got them here. But we have to practice for being around the world catching water. And if you can't get plastic cisterns, we want to be practiced at making a tire cistern. And this is how you make a tire cistern and uh, good luck, and you're going to have 6,000 gallons of water. And you can 
find more about what to do after it in our WAM, our Water Organizing Module, by attending our intern or academy program. Uh, thank you.